One of the things that makes Airtable so cool is how modular the software is. We can literally build pretty much anything we want to support our businesses. And that's what makes it so great is that we can build it and customize it to our individual needs. One thing though that almost all of us have in common is the need to track some sort of payments because we don't have much of a business if there isn't some sort of payment or money coming in. And so this is a common use case that almost anyone could apply to their business and we're going to be tracking payments through automation so that when that payment is made, it's getting recorded right into our CRM and Airtable database so that we have everything in one place. So if that's of interest to you, let's get into it. Hi, my name is Gareth Pronovost and I'm the owner of Gap Consulting, where we help businesses to get organized and automated so that they spend less time in their business and more time working on building their business. So as I said in the intro here, we are going to be going into detail on setting up an automated process that will take a payment that's made in your payment software and zap that information into your Airtable database so that you don't have to go looking for it through countless spreadsheets and you have it all in one place. So before we get into it though, if you are new to this channel and you want to level up your Airtable game, definitely click that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. That way you don't miss out on our future Airtable content. That being said, let's just jump into my screen and get started. So the first thing we need to describe is how we are going to set up this kind of a solution for uh, our Airtable. The first step is always building out the structure in Airtable that will support any kind of automation. And so a pretty common use case for something like this would be to run three different tables. So the first table would actually be what I have in the middle here, and that would be your contacts. At a very high level, you need at least a contact name and the, uh, the contact email. You probably collect a lot more than that, but that's all we're going to need for this setup. And then we're going to link contacts to what we call opportunities. And opportunities is where we're going to track the different uh, other parts, or rather the different offers that we've put out there and made for, uh, for folks. So these are proposals that we've submitted in a service-based business or estimates that we've submitted if we're doing some sort of engineering or architecture. Uh, it really is different for every business, but the point is these are con uh, contracts that you've engaged on and they haven't crossed the finish line yet, but you've put out the, you know, the, the work, a little bit of work up front to get these get these rolling, right? And so a couple of things that we're going to track here, and let's just kind of go into this, you know, one step at a time. First thing is, why do we have opportunities separate from contacts? A lot of times, business owners want to kind of roll this all into one table. I strongly discourage that. I think there's a lot of value in having opportunities as its own table because it's a unique set of data. The opportunities data set is something that can relate back to the contact multiple times. For example, you could have a contact over here, let's you know pick on Batman, let's say, who has multiple opportunities. We might have another opportunity that we create for uh, Batman that would be a different one. So he might you know get a, another opportunity on a completely different day, a uh, different type of opportunity, all these things. So once you have a contact in your database, keeping it from a different data set from opportunities is valuable. That way you can track them uh, independently. More importantly, uh, there's a lot of data that is unique to the opportunity that we want to track that is not necessarily unique to the contact him or herself. So keeping them separate is a big uh, key takeaway here. Now the other thing is, uh, so once we have the link to the contacts, then we're using a lookup field to bring in the email. And this is because we automatically know, well, if it's this contact, then we know what email it relates to. Uh, we also have in here an opportunity type, assuming that this particular business has three different main offers. This could be different for every business, uh, depending on the structure of that business, maybe this is uh, you know eliminated entirely. But in a lot of cases, we're gonna have something similar to the type here. Uh, we also definitely wanna track a date created. Now for the sake of this, of course, I just have a regular date field where I could change the date, but you could also just as easily make it so that this reflects metadata uh, that is uh, the exact date and time that the record was created. Either one works in this case. 
We also have a status of the opportunity, which is essentially, uh, you know, go or no go. Was it accepted? Was it declined? You might also have some sort of holding status here, like a pause or something like that as well. And then we're going to link that to payments, and that's what we're going to really be talking in, about in just the next uh, section. And over on payments, once we've linked to the payments, we're also going to track the payment date, that is the date the payment was made, and that way we can track how many days it took to convert. So in this case, if we submitted a proposal or started an opportunity on the 9th, and then it closed on the 11th, we know it was a two-day conversion. And this is pretty simply written or performed with a formula that just does a little date time difference. So this part right here where we say date time difference between the payment date and the date created and display that difference in time in days as the unit. So once we have that, uh, we have a nice little output here that shows us how long it took to convert and we can do some really cool dashboards with these numbers as well. We're not gonna go into that in this video, but it is possible. So if that's something that you're curious about, check out the blocks and building some KPI dashboards there. All right, so the third table here is payments. So just a quick recap, we've got contacts and contacts connect to opportunities. And now we're gonna to get to two payments. And payments connects also to opportunities. So in this way, I suppose I will move contacts to the far left and we'll go from left to right. We have contacts, opportunities, payments. Now when a payment is made, it links to an opportunity and because the opportunity is connected to the contacts, we know who the contact is. We can also record the date that the payment was made and if we chose to record amounts in the database, we could do that here as well. Now this is a great way, you know, if you're recording this from you know, Stripe or PayPal or something like that, very often it will come in with, uh, you know, different unique codes for that payment. So the payment ID and things like that, all of that data can be brought in here as well. Now for the sake of our automation, I'm gonna be actually using uh, Kajabi. Uh, so assuming that a payment was made or an offer was purchased in Kajabi is what's gonna be the trigger here. Uh, Kajabi integrates directly with Stripe, so you could get a lot of this extra information. Exactly how you pull this in, you know, what software, what system you use to collect your payments is going to be unique for you, but they almost all work in a similar way. So let's look at the automation then and talk about how this would be set up. So we're going to have a four-step automation here. Now the first step is the trigger, and the trigger is just that new purchase coming in. This is fairly easy to set up. And you see here that I set it up with Kajabi, but again, you could use uh, a number of different softwares here. Now, the second step is gonna be finding that opportunity. And this is going to require that we identify which opportunity this uh, payment is in reference to, or this offer is in reference to. There are a couple of ways we could do that. You know, we might have different payment portals set up for different opportunities. Um, and so we could we could do some sort of like a filter that way. Uh, in this case, what I'm doing is I'm looking up the email and, that's associated with every opportunity here, and I'm saying, well, when I find that email, then I know who paid it. Because very often when a payment is made, especially with Kajabi, and this is one reason I like Kajabi a lot, when a payment's made, you know what member made the payment, and so you can then track that email address. But you'll need some sort of identifier. You know, that might be different for you and your business, but you'll need some sort of identifier that helps you understand who that client is so that you can record a payment against that correct opportunity and or client. In this case, our second step is finding the opportunity. And so what we've set up there is we're looking up the email that came from the Kajabi purchase and we're matching it against the email in our opportunities table. So as I was describing, we're just in our opportunities table, we're looking for that email address and once we find it, we know that that's the opportunity we want to work with. Now inside of Airtable, we could do some more advanced things. In this case, for example, we have two opportunities with Batman. We wouldn't want to get these mixed up. So we could do some more advanced searches, which I don't go into detail on in this video. Just know that it's possible. All right. So from here, what we would do is once we found that opportunity, that's step two. Now we need to update the status of that opportunity. And so the way we build this is, again, we link to the base, the opportunity, and we use a custom value when we are updating the record. And specifically, the custom value is the record ID that we found in step two. So the record that we pulled back in step two with this find uh, function, we're gonna be using it here. And that's how we're telling Zapier which record we want to update inside of Airtable. 
Now, once we've done that, what we want to change is we want to change that status of that opportunity. So here, again, we're tracking these different uh, opportunities and we have a status that's blank. And when we, uh, when we have this, uh, when we find that, that opportunity, we want to update the status to accepted. And so we'll do that just by uh, typing in the word accepted there, just as I've done here. And that will then uh, fill in accepted inside of this. Now that is great for tracking the opportunity and we could close it out at this point if we wanted to, but if we want to go just a step further in this, then the last step would be creating the actual payment or recording the payment here on the payment table. And so that's the third and final step. And so if we're, or excuse me, the fourth and final step. So if we're looking at that, what this looks like is this time we're looking again at the same base and now we're looking at the payments table and we're going to be using that opportunity ID from, uh, again, this is from step two. So really quickly, let's flip back over to payments. What we're doing is we're bringing in the ID that we found for the opportunity. So in step two of our automation, we found the opportunity and we're just going to connect this payment to that opportunity one more time. And that's again, how we're going to be able to track and reconcile who's paid what. And then the other part that you'll find here is I filled out with the date with this uh, metadata. Now, this is a great way if you're uh, new to Zapier, you can just record the date and timestamp that the actual automation ran. And you do that by using the Zap Meta Human Now tag inside of Zapier. Uh, if we had an amount that we wanted to bring in, we could do that as well. But of course, the contact part is going to be filling in automatically. And so the contact is not something we need to pull in because the contact, again, is related to the opportunity. So I realized that this was a lot and we definitely went kind of fast through it. But the main takeaway here is that it's absolutely possible to have a beautifully built database that is fully automated so that when a payment comes in, it gets properly recorded and set up in your database so that you don't have to do any transferring of data. And instead, all you need to do is pop into work every day and take a look at what your pipeline looks like and check out uh, if any new deals have closed. Now, of course, as I mentioned, there are some more advanced use cases for dashboards as well. So definitely check those out and uh, feel free to scroll through our channel and see the different resources we put together for that. All right, as always, I hope you found that to be super helpful. If you did and you have some business questions that you'd like to run by us, definitely swing by our website. The link will be in the description and we offer up time so that we can hop on a call with you. You can book directly there and we can set something up that works for both of us. What we'll be discussing is building a solution for you that puts all of your data in one place and gives you a nice concise dashboard so that you know what's happening in your business at all times. Additionally, we will work on building custom bespoke automation for you so that you can eliminate the time that you spend on repetitive tasks and save countless hours every week. So if that's of interest, definitely swing by our website and check out the different offers that we have there.